Hey everyone, this is the second part. In the first part, we have seen how we can log all the requests and response from one place, only one class. And we, we, we were able to log all the requests and responses. So this video, I'm going to explain you about the second part, which is how we can validate and mask the data before logging. Sometimes there are sensitive information that uh, we are passing in request and response and we need to mask that one so that it is not visible in the log. So we can do that. So and second thing is filtering request to be logged. There are n number of endpoints. I want particular endpoints to be logged. So how I can do that. So this video, I'm going to explain these two topics. OK, so let's go ahead and get started. So This is the request and response logger file that we already have created. So first, I'm going to explain you how we can or filter the request that is to be logged. So let me go ahead and create a configuration for that. Config dot filters. I'm naming it filters config. All right. So first and foremost thing that I have to do annotated with configuration and there is one class filter registration bean. This is important one for this purpose here i have to create the bean right and this should be of type request response loggers that we just created that filter so we will be using this request response logger to create this bean all right create loggers i am just naming this method and in here i am just passing this one so that its instance is ready for us okay and the second one is I am just going to create the instance of this one. New filter registration bin. All right. So this is one. And now we have this registration bin ready. In this registration bin, now I have to set oh this one. In this registration bin, now I have to set filter which filter i want to configure here right so this is the same that we just passed here and the second thing in this one i have to i have to pass the url patterns add url pattern so this url pattern uh, is the endpoint path of the endpoint that i want to process so for example r if i show you the controller here our controller, uh, our endpoint name starts with slash v1 and after that we have add product, we have product list, uh, product list category we have and all these we have. And by the time when our application is increasing, features are in increasing, we may be having more than one controller file. For that, we will be having a uh, different naming convention there, right? So for now, let's say that we have this v1 and for now, we have all these endpoints and I have to decide that which endpoints I want to log and which I want to skip. So let's start with the first one. So we have this V1. Okay. And then after that, we have uh, these controllers. We have add product. All right. We have product list here. Right. And we have product list category, product ID and all those things. So let's say let's say i want to log this one only when i am adding the product into the system only then i want to log the request so i'm just naming this one so i can by comma comma separated endpoints i can give here multiple endpoints this uh, this product controller slash v1 slash and add product this ends here what about what about this one that product slash id second one it is taking a dynamic value so for that we can pass a regular expression so first one is going to be the same and second it is going to be product and then it is going to be start wild char character right so after product whatever is going to be there it is going to be taken into consideration okay so this is it we have registered our filter with filter registration bean and we have add url patterns with which it is going to be triggered that's it this is what we needed for now and now i'm just going to return this bean here all right and annotate it with at the rate bean and coming here request response logger so i was saying that this thing I do not need and this at the rate component we need we need instance of this one 
because we have passed it here and it is expecting that context will pass request response logger here there is another way that you can create this one you just copy uh, copy this one here and create uh, you can create the instance by using new as well if you want to skip this part here so and when you you using this uh, it this way you can just comment this out so these are both options that you can go for but i say that instead of using new you use the previous one that we have here this one okay so we have both the options that you can use it's nice and let it create let the instance of this one created by the spring boot context itself okay so this filters config is ready now this bean is ready and we have configured which urls to log the request and response here and we have uh, removed order it is not needed at all and this component this instance is being created here first task we are, we are going to complete just going to restart the application i am going to show you this that when we hit when we will be hitting this product list it is not it will not be its request and response will not be logged when we are adding the product we will be seeing the request and response in here okay so just clear it go to the postman here and here we have first one we have product so if at the same time if i show you this part here <coughs> filters config here v1 product star we have right so when i hit this what is the expectation i should be able to see the request and response in the console I'm seeing the request and response that's perfectly fine clear it and let's see the second one add product as well right and post I am going here and sending it here this product created and I am able to see the request and response body now uh, let's try the update one that we have we have this put request right product update and I have not configured this URL so I should not be seeing the request and response for this one i'm not seeing this one all right so send it again product updated but i'm not seeing anything let's try with one other so we have this product list as well right so coming here get product list listed here but nothing coming here so now now we are able to filter the request and response properly second coming to this validating and masking the data before logging so why is this needed so if i take you the endpoint of this one product here so we have id name category price currency would you think that uh, the information is sensitive here uh, actually uh, it is not making much sense that uh, in product information there is going to be some sensitive data but in real time but in real time uh, you are going to be having password field right and if you're registering the user you are going to have ssn information pan aadhaar and all these id information personal details of the users that are considered to be uh, sensitive and i do not want to log these information all right so how i can filter uh, these things so for our for this one for this product service for example just uh, for say that I do not want to expose the currency of the currency of the product that is being passed okay how I can do this okay so just coming here so uh, I just have to uh, and uh, and for your information now we have this string format right we have the all the response in a string format I have to I have to see that where currency is and its value and I just have to mask that one so for that just take this into a variable here response i'm just naming it result and here so this is the string that we have and in the same way take the request body as well Just name it request data okay 
and name it here and I do not want to replace uh, do this replace the uh, uh, thing that I am doing here so that will be taken care automatically and it what I am doing request data by doing this uh, there is no masking as of now here so I am just uh, extracted this into a variable how I can mask this one so there is one uh, handy class object mapper here it's a class not needed so if I auto air okay oh here I am doing wrong it so it should be a class variable we have this object mapper inserted into this one and we have now this request data all right and here is one thing i can do this when you see the object mapper and you uh, create this one and see the read value and pass the request data here and the second type that you pass here so uh, what it is going to do it is going to take this request data which is in json format all right and it is going to convert that respective class automatically by this one so i should be able, i should know that what exact type of this JSON is so that it can be converted into that one right so this is the one cache that I have to do here uh, what I have to do so just uh, I should be able to uh, know the request URI here a string URI which is coming from here and name it URI here So from this controller, now I have to choose which endpoint, uh, which endpoint I want to mask the data for, right? So for example, here I am going to take this add product. So because add product is going to uh, contain actual product data, right? Not uh, not the get request. So it is going to be have post mapping or put mapping, which is going to have the product body, like uh, request body. So for example, I am taking this add product here. A request response logger here and I have to uh, like uh, I have to put the like if else I have to put here when this particular URL uh, equals ignore case with URI all right and this is the add product and what is the complete URL here v1 add this one this is the complete url that we have add product it is equal with this one then i have to mark uh, then only i am able to get the request data then uh, which i have to pass and what type it is going to have it is going to have the product class and create one local variable this is very easy to do just uh, need to get the concept here when we have this product and just uh, go to the specific attribute that you want to mask and put this one right so any logic you can put here that you want and again i have to take this object mapper right value registering and change this one and we assign this value so when this condition is true it is going to be masked all right and request data is going to be printed here that's it and same thing i have to do with the response body right so uh, in case of add product we do not have any response body as such uh, it is just going yeah it is going to have a product body so i just to take care of that as well so just take this data here and after creating this equals this uri take the response result here and update this one, all right so this is going to take this information here so everything is fine it is going to work this way right so restart the application and in the same way you can play around with other endpoints as well like if you want to uh, put this product id you can put this one under this if else and it is going to do the job automatically so the thing is that the string that you are going to get you just convert that into specific object type that it is being written from you get the type what it is returning from here like list and a specific one and it is going to do the job so just it is restarted and we have uh, taken add product right so coming to the postman here and going to the 
post part and you send this request yeah 201 created and if I come here uh, I can say that we have request body name category this one currency is being masked here right in the request body and in the response body we have this one and we have this currency is being masked so now you can play now you know how you can mask the data and you can do many things like what data you want to mask you can externalize that one by adding that into yaml file and you can read that in configuration and come in here so in the subsequent video when we will be taking care of the user management service which is going to contain actual data like username password ssn and all those things information those need actual masking right so we will uh, revisit this concept again in uh, in that uh, microservice when we will be developing so we for so now this video completes here this topic completes here this uh, this video has taken too much time uh, I was not expecting this one but I wanted to make sure everything is clear and hands-on coding takes time you have to believe this one so uh, that's all about this video so if you found this useful please don't forget to like subscribe and share the video that really motivates me to put more effort and create more content like this so I'll see you in the next video till then take care stay safe bye bye